So just a brief note on the gospel, because I want to I preach on that first reading. Is This is really a call, on the one hand, to see the, the zeal in which someone tries to figure out how to take care of themselves. And so Jesus is saying, look to the ingenuity that's there. But then he'll go on later after this saying, don't hold on to the things of this world. He talks about mammon. He talks about material wealth. And so it's, a, it's a, an example, but also a warning at the same time. It's kind of like, I, I use this example of, um, if you've ever seen the, the movie Ocean's Eleven, or one of those like heist movies, you might look and say, wow, there's a lot of ingenuity. There's a lot of creativity in what they're doing. But it doesn't mean, okay, I'm supposed to do that. There's a way in which you can kind of appreciate the ability of someone to think through things and be clever, but then it's not necessarily saying, go and do that. That's what Jesus is saying here. And there's a little more here as well, but that's kind of the key thing, is if the people of this world, this generation, are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than the children of light, then there's a problem. The sense of if people are using all of their resources and everything to get ahead in this life, we should be doing that all the more to say, how do I look and see my end goal is heaven? I want to be a saint. And so how do I use all that I am, all that I can do, in order to make sure that I make those right kind of decisions to be able to live my life in a holy way. And so it's really a challenge to the children of light to be able to say, you need to be living more radically than the children of this world that are clever but in a dishonest way. And so that's really the the core of the gospel right there. Now, looking at this um, letter of St. Paul to the Romans, there's a really important passage here, and it says this. This is how St. Paul sees his ministry. This is at the end of the letter to the Romans. He says, I've written you rather boldly in some respects to remind you because of the grace given me by God. So God's giving him a grace to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles. That's what his mission was. And then it says this, in performing the priestly service of the gospel of God, so that the offering up of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. So St. Paul sees his missionary endeavors in a priestly sort of way. St. Paul was an apostle and was a priest, a bishop. So it's important for us to remember that. Sometimes we forget about that, and we maybe think that he's just kind of an itinerant evangelist that's going around, but he also is a priest of God. And so he's seeing his ministry in terms of going out, gathering the fruits of the harvest, and lifting them up to God so that they might be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. What do we do at Mass? We gather the fruits of the harvest— the grain and the wine, this bread and wine, which cannot be, it doesn't come into existence on its own. God creates the nature, but then it takes civilization in order to make bread. Bread just doesn't grow out of the ground. It has to be formed by the ingenuity of men's mind and culture. Wine as well. You just can't have grapes fall And all of a sudden, you have wine. There's a whole process of that. So it's this way of saying you have nature given by God, and then man taking that and using what's been given to him to be able to perfect it and then offer it up to God. So we take bread and wine. We bring them forward. And then the priest calls the Holy Spirit upon them, soaking them, getting them ready so that they might be They might be transformed, transubstantiated. 
into Christ himself to be given back to the very people that gave the best of their heart, the best of the harvest. That's what we're being called to do at Mass. We need to come. And yes, we bring bread and wine, but we also bring our heart and we bring the gift, the created heart that's been given to us, but then all of our talents, all of our experiences, everything that we are, we offer that. And we allow the Holy Spirit to soak that heart, just like he's soaking the bread and wine, so that it can be transformed by the word of God, those words coming from the priest, this is my body, this is my blood. The Holy Spirit needs to come to soak it to get it ready, so that there can be power in the word. And then that bread and wine is turned into Jesus himself, given back to his people. Your heart, given to the Lord, is made holy and then given back to you to love his children. And St. Paul saw this dynamic and said, when he would celebrate Mass, I imagine, sometimes we, we forget about that. St. Paul is celebrating Mass, and he sees this dynamic, and he sees that he needs to receive the Eucharist, and he, re he needs to receive his heart that's been given, and now it's been transformed into the very heart of God, and now he's called to go out and gather the people so that they are like the grains, so that he can use all that he is to be able to help them come together, but he can't just put them together. He needs the water of God, and he needs the fire of God. He needs the water of baptism. He needs the fire of the Holy Spirit to take the people that he's preaching to so that they can truly become one body in Christ. And it's in that that he offers them to God, saying, Heavenly Father, transform these brothers and sisters of mine into your son's heart, into your son's image, so that they too can then go out and gather the nations and bring them to the altar of God so that they can be transformed as well. And it's this going back and forth, back and forth. And so in a very particular way, St. Paul was called to that as a priest of God, as a um, called to be an apostle, not one of the twelve. He wasn't called in that way, but Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, directly called him and, and, and revealed himself in his glorified state. And he says, I am an apostle because Jesus Christ came to me directly and said, I'm sending you forth. I've called you, I've chosen you, and I've called you to go forth. And he lives this out as a ministerial priest. And the bishops and priests are, are called to live out that particular way of bringing God's people to become more and more God's body through the sacraments. But every single one of us is called to share in the one priesthood of Christ. And we do it in a different way. There is called the royal priesthood of the faithful. And you can learn more about that in 1 Peter 2, 9. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. It goes all the way back to the Old Testament in which Jesus, God's original design was to make a kingdom of priests so that they could take their hearts and offer it in praise to God, to be able to see their very lives as a burning sacrifice filled with the fire of God to be able to have it be transformed into a sweet-smelling fragrance to be able to go up to God and to be that offering that's able to draw the nations in. And that's what the Lord's calling each of you to do by your baptism. When you entered into Christ's body, you entered into his mission of being a priest, of being a prophet, of being a king. To be a king, as St. Paul says, don't let sin reign over your mortal bodies. Allow the king of kings to conquer sin in your life. And to allow the king of kings, through your courage, to be able to go out 
and to allow the King of Kings to conquer the various sectors of society so that the leaven can spread. To be a prophet is to illuminate the darkness by the light of Christ. Jesus Christ came and said, I've come to preach good news to the poor, to bring liberty to captives, sight to the blind. And you are called to do that by your words and by your deeds, so that when people see you, they can see the light of Christ working through you and can illuminate the truth of how am I supposed to live my life? What is the meaning of life? How am I called to truly be happy? That's what it means to be a prophet. And it means to courageously speak truth into the midst of areas that are dark. And then finally, to be a priest, to be a royal priest, a, a part of the common priesthood of the baptized, is to take your life and see it as an offering. Offer it to God. Don't hold anything back. Don't let God be just a slice of the piece of your life. And you kind of give him just one part, but he wants everything. Just like in the sacrifices in Israel, they didn't just take half of the bull, half of the lamb, but they, there was a consumed whole offering. And so the Lord just doesn't want your arm. He just doesn't want your big toe. He wants everything that you are. And he wants the Holy Spirit to, to come upon everything that you are, body, mind, and soul, so that you can be transformed into that fragrant offering that then permeates and becomes the sweet-smelling fragrance of the mercy of God. And it comes from offering your daily lives, offering everything that you are, offering your family, allowing the sweet-smelling fragrance to permeate in your family life so that as they see you, and they, in a sense, smell you in that sort of way, they can be lifted up to say, I too want to give my life to God. That's what it means to be a priest, gathering the people of God into worship. When you're worshiping God and your whole life is a worship of God, then other people are drawn in. And you image what Jesus Christ said about himself. When I am lifted up, I will draw all back to myself. So this is our call. St. Paul understood his mission, his call, and the Lord is saying, you are baptized. And because of that, this is your call to be a priest, a prophet, and a king, to bring his presence to permeate the cosmos.